been a while, right, everybody? I mean, this is one of, like, the iconic series on the channel. 60 seconds. I love this game. If you've never seen me play this game before, basically, you have 60 seconds before a nuclear bomb drops right on top of your house, and you have to gather items around the house that'll help you survive once you jump in the bunker. You only have one minute to gather those items and jump in the bunker. You can grab your family members if you want, but if you go solo, hey, I can't even blame you. Couple things I want to say before we start this. Number one, the developers of this game were actually the first developers to ever reach out to me and tell me that they enjoyed me playing this game so much that they actually sent me some stuff. I accidentally put some gum on this. They gave me this thing, and um, I remember that there was a note inside. Oh, that's cringe. I actually don't have the note anymore. They actually made me a handwritten note and said that they could probably make the Boy Scout book, the Cub Scout book, and like as a little Easter egg for the thing. So yeah, shout out to Robot Gentleman. Well, we are about to play this in 2022. I have no idea if there's been any updates with this. I actually don't even remember what some of the items do. It's been so long. I feel like the last time I played this was like a year or two ago. But let me see if I can play this on Sarbama for your mama and I can get out of this nuclear apocalypse in one piece. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. So yeah, we are going to play the apocalypse and we're going to go with good old Ted. We're going to go on Sarbama for your mama, like I just said. 60 seconds to gather as many items as you can and then you jump in the bunker. If this is your first video of 60 seconds that you've seen, it's gonna be dope, watch me. So, um, oh, this is actually cringe. I guess I'll get that. That's some protection. Get a flashlight, ba-bam. Check a board so the family doesn't get bored. Throw you in there. Definitely need that gas for that ass. My son, Timothy, I'll throw you down there. Should I bring my daughter? Nah, forget it. Tim's gonna be an only child. Yeah, his name's not Tim anymore. His name's Tim. He's grown up. It's been years since this game came out. He's an adult now, or at least a teenager. I think this game came out in like 2015. He's at least a teenager. Let me get that gun. And then the harmonica. What else do I need? What else do I need? What else do I need? Oh, I need the Boy Scout book. And I need to think. I can't even think. I'm trying to one take J this. I only want to play this one time. And that's it. Get the radio. Get that. And what am I so? Hamana, 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 hamana. Get that? Okay. I think we're good. Grab anything else? Nope. Okay, okay. We're going here. You have to make it there once the 60th second happens. I'm gonna try to one take Javis. Let the I'm playing this for the first time in 2022 challenge begin. You all thought I forgot this thing, huh? The little jazz hands. You all thought I forgot that, huh? Come on now. It's day one, son. I'm excited to get into this. Wait, I brought Dolores? I don't remember bringing her. Almost all of us made it to the shelter. Almost. All we can do now is start thinking of creative ways to serve our canned soup. We don't have that much food. No one's complaining yet. But even canned soup might become an extravagant dish quite soon. There's just barely enough water for everyone. We will have to ration it strictly. Okay, I do remember water every five days, food every five days, and yeah, we have three waters and one soup, so this is, uh, Mamma Mia, I caramba. Be safe down here. I don't read random notes. I do remember that, too. I don't read random notes. I'm gonna prepare to scavenge, and I'm gonna send somebody outside to get all the supplies that we can, and I'm really gonna try to get an ending. This is the hardest difficulty. Like, this shit is unforgiving. So let's prepare to scavenge. And someone is very serious about banging on the hatch. We are scared to open it, but it might be some good news, right? We would gladly welcome any friendly face, even if it was our neighbor, Ned. We're pretty sure that if there was any reason why our town got bombed, he would be that reason. Shall we open? I don't think so. Because it could be nothing. It could be just like some rocks that accidentally hit against the door, and then the whole family could get sick. And I'm not trying to risk that, because I don't even have a med kit. So what we're gonna do, like any responsible parent would, is send out our child, our only child. And Timmy went out to the wasteland. We don't know what we'll do if he doesn't come back. You'll be all right, you'll live. Maybe you'll make another kid. It's not the best time or place to make plans for the future, but we can't stop thinking about what we can make of this terrible situation. There's nothing you can do, honestly. It's hopeless. It's like staring into a dark tunnel, there's no light. But it's day five, and after five days, like I said, everybody, I have to give them some of that good old water. So let's give them that. And I don't have a med kit. And they actually are losing sleep, so they're probably going to get a little crazy, right? Let me see. Let me see if Ted and Dolores are getting a little crazy. Ye oh, they're not. Okay, shout out the parents. Bravely ignoring our symptoms, we tried to get at least an hour or two of sleep. No luck. We're even more tired than we were. 
and there are other problems we will need to face soon. Let's just hope our yawning will be enough to scare raiders away or save us from radiation sickness. So Ted isn't thirsty anymore and Dolores is no longer thirsty, but Dolores is really tired. And every new smell attacks our noses in this little shelter instantly. There isn't much we can miss. So, when a single brick fell out from the wall revealing a tight opening, our senses were immediately invaded by a terrible stench. We should probably check that hole out and see what the source of that smell is. So I don't have a good experience with holes. Usually when I check a hole, it's never good news. But we're gonna check what that smell is. It better not smell like unwiped ass or else. But hopefully we got some new items, come on now. Oh, we got a can of soup! Hell yeah, fuck yeah, mighty! There it goes again. Noises. Weird noises all the time. Are they coming from the pipes? The walls? Is it something behind that door? We don't know and it's driving us insane. We should sit down and relax. Otherwise, we might get paranoid. That's the exact reason why I brought the checkers. So the parents can have something to do. But a phone's ringing everybody. Ring, ring, there we were. Thinking we would never hear a telephone signal again. When suddenly a phone starts ringing from somewhere outside. We figured it's the phone booth across the street. Should someone go answer it? You know what? I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna send out Dolores because that could be the start of an ending. And I think Timmy just came back. Let's see what he brought back. He looks like he brought back some water and some soup, right? Hold up. Yep, two cans of soup. One water and he lost a gas mask. I'm done. You know what? Go, go sit in the corner. You're punished. Let me give him some water and some soup. And actually, let me give everybody some water and soup. I don't think I should prepare to scavenge until I know from the radio that the radioactivity is not, like, gonna make us sick or whatever. I forgot what it was. We're either going crazy or this entire shelter is crawling with little insects. Or worse. It's worse. There's spiders. And it's not some miniature ones, but huge, furry, and creepy beasts. We've got to do something about them. Yeah, just grab the book, just bash them over the head, just beat their brains out, you know? Oh, and look, killing the spider gave us water, so there is some good with killing spiders. So it's day 11, and it says, We can keep sitting on our backsides here in this tiny little bunker, or we can start thinking about getting away as far as possible from this radioactive wasteland. Who would have thought the Reds would ruin such a lovely neighborhood? We could do it on our own, the escaping part, not the ruining part, of course. However, However, there might be someone out there who can help us. Let's keep our eyes and ears open. Okay, I'm trying to get the radio situation where it tells me if, like, the radioactivity outside is gone. Because my gas mask is all types of fucked up. And unless I get the Boy Scout scenario where I can attempt to fix it, I won't be able to go outside without getting sick. But I might have to risk it. Because I don't have that much water and much food. But it says that Timmy didn't say a word about it. But when he was outside, he scratched his hand like the little bitch that he is. He got a boo-boo on his hand? What, do you want your mom to kiss it? Oh, and now you're crying and you have the sniffles? Come on, man. We opened the bunker door this morning to let in some fresh radioactive air. We discovered a small suitcase on our doorstep. There was no note on it, and the neighborhood seemed empty. Should we take a look inside? No. The smart thing to do anytime you get like a mysterious package or a knock on the door, you don't answer it, you don't open it, and you try to live as long as possible. I think I'm gonna send out Timmy though into the wild because he's already sick. His days are numbered. So what I'm gonna do, he can't actually leave because he's too fragile. He's too emotional. Today we've met a bunch of people dressed in what look like Halloween doctor outfits. They claim to be a field hospital, moving from place to place and attempting to help those hurt by the hazards of the wasteland. Their problem is, some of their supplies got eaten by something that looked like a Sasquatch. They're asking us if we have any spare hydrogen peroxide. If you call water hydrogen peroxide, I ain't giving you shit, buddy. But anyways, day 15, giving them the good old stuff. And Timmy still can't go outside. But it's been a while, we don't know much about what's happening on the surface. If we only had a chance to tune in to some emergency radio broadcast, this is the thing that I've been waiting for because once we find out that we can go outside without the gas mask I can send out Ted or Dolores because Timmy's too fragile Timmy doesn't want to leave the bunker but we got a weak signal and the fallout outside has mostly gone okay Timmy I am not gonna send you out you can boohoo cry in here to your heart's content what's that glowing in your pocket Timmy oh no mutated ants the terrifying little mandibles almost gave Dolores a heart attack she wants them out but Timmy says it's the beginning of an atomic ant farm. One of them has to have it their way, but who? Dolores, because I don't remember what the ants do. And they're atomic, so you don't want that toxic energy. Like, you don't need toxic people in your life. Timmy reluctantly agreed to get rid of the insects. But once they escaped his pocket, they proved rather hostile. One even bit his finger. Let's keep our distance in case. 
Timmy decides to mutate and grow a mandible overnight. What if he becomes Ant-Man? That should be so legit. Okay, let me actually send out Dolores. And Timmy would have been the human sacrifice, but he's so fragile. A young woman dressed in white knocked on our door today, telling us a story of her missing twin brother, who is most probably held captive in a bandit camp. He tried to defeat a big bandit leader, and his sister fears something might have happened to him. She claims to know that we're good and trustworthy people, and believes that we can help her rescue her sibling. If we do, she says it might be the beginning of a solid friendship. How do you know that they're trustworthy people? Like, have you seen Ted's hairdo? I would not trust him with a 10-foot pole. He looks like a serial killer that's hiding out in a bunker. And Timmy looks like he just flunked clown school. Finding the lost twin brother wasn't a problem. He was hanging on top of some antenna next to the fence trying to escape. In his duel with the bandit leader, he lost a hand. But the group quickly tended to his injuries, and he'll be just fine. The siblings thanked us a hundred times and said they would definitely contact us again. Ted looks very weak. If he doesn't eat today, it might be the end. Ooh, I forgot to feed them. Okay, so let's feed Timmy and Ted. And mysterious sounds are coming from our radio, but they're hidden behind a ton of static. Do we want to tinker with it a bit and find the right frequency? It could be something important, or it could be the opposite. Only one way to find out. Yeah, the only way to find out is to not touch it. The more I play this, the more my memory starts to jog with this game. And I remember tinkering with the radio actually messes it up way more than anything else you could do with it. Tinkering with our precious radio sounds like a bad idea. Let's just hope this wasn't anything important. So it's day 20. Let's give them some water. And a woman came by with a creature she claims is a camel. Provided that camels have five legs. The animal is carrying a pack of goods for trade. The person trades one water in exchange for the checkerboard. Four waters in exchange for one radio. Ooh. Two in exchange for the med kit and one in exchange for the bullets. Do I need the checkerboard? Or do I need the radio? What else would I need the radio for? I already got in contact with the twins, so that's one ending we can get. I already know that the fallout outside is gone. So do I need the radio? That's four waters. And I might not get this opportunity again, but Dolores could potentially come back with more waters herself. You know what? I'm gonna give up the radio. That's an executive decision. I think that I made the right choice. Let me know what you all thought about that in the comments, but I think I actually made the right choice. So we have four waters and we have one less radio. As we were about to start our book club discussion on the only book we've all read, the phone book, we were interrupted by rapid knocking at the door. We found out it was a group of refugees who survived the blast just like we did. They were doing much worse than us and begged us to provide them with any water, food, or medical supplies we could spare. Okay, so it's a domino effect. We gave up the radio, got four waters, we're helping them out, and I think that there's some good karma in effect here. I think that something good's actually gonna happen. But where the hell is Dolores? Our visitors had problems finding enough words to express their gratitude. Many tears were shed, smiles and hugs exchanged, and they wished us all the best. It's a great feeling to be helping someone out. They left soon after to seek shelter in the ruins of our town. We hope they make it out there. Wait, what? Wait, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. We just scratched their back and then they laughed in our faces and left. What the hell was that about? Dolores is temporarily out of the shelter. We can finally talk out loud without someone shushing us every five minutes. Our shelter isn't a library. Tonight, our shelter shall be a concert hall. Oh man, I don't want to hear that. That's some nails on a chalkboard type shit. But it's day 23, Michael Jordan day, and nobody's back yet. So I think Dolores might actually be dead. Lively dancing, off-key singing, and music so loud, it temporarily drowns out the quiet hum of existential dread in our heads. Just what we needed to start another day with new energy. Yeah, whatever you say. Timmy noticed his old telescope in a pile of rubble on the other side of the street. He got really excited about stargazing again. After all, the night sky is one of the very few things that still look about the same after the blast. Should we let Timmy go out and stare pointlessly at the sky? If he can, I mean his hair is so freaking long that I don't even know if he could see. But you know what? That's the hairstyle nowadays. That's the hairstyle that people, they want. They want perms. And Dolores is back, but she's sick. And I think that she got a radio, right? Hold up. She brought two soups, a radio, and that's it. All right. Um, I guess I'll give her some of that. And should I prepare? Oh, Timmy can scavenge. Okay, let's prepare to scavenge and hear that. It sounds like a herd of animals are stampeding above our heads across what used to be our beautiful lawn. They are not getting away with that. It might be a perfect opportunity to get some fresh food. Who should go hunting? You know what, Dolores? You look like you could kill a bear with your bare hands. So I'm actually going to send her out because she looks sick as fuck. 
<laughs> and I think she died. And then now Ted's sick. And the gun is gone. Oh my good God. I made the wrong choice. I'm so dumb, bro. But let's send out Timmy. Maybe he'll come back with a med kit or something. Fuck. I'm trying to one take Jay this, but if Ted dies on me, this is going to be the worst thing ever. Please, Ted, don't die on me. There's never a good time to go outside in the radioactive wasteland, but it seems this will become a necessity in this new world of ours. We thought it would be a good idea to make this happen sooner rather than later and plan a trip outside. Before we could make the third step beyond the shelter doors, an unknown creature started growling at us in the darkness. We only had a moment to decide what to do. That's Pancake, the dog in this game. You can actually have a pet dog. So I'm going to actually attempt to get the dog. But I think that you need the med kit to get the dog, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna feed Ted. Maybe he'll feel better if we do. Oh, shit. The siblings came back, but they need an axe, and I don't have that. Timmy, please come back with something. This really is hard mode because I don't have any of the shit that the siblings need. I'm dead, everybody. There's no way that I'm gonna survive this. There's a man on our doorstep, and he wants to be our friend. At least that's what he says. He looks harmless, although he seems to have acquired an extra pair of arms as a result of some weird mutation. He assures us we will not get sick and asks for our help. If we could provide him and his group with some supplies, they would repay us by helping us fight off the next raiding party that comes our way. Should we accept this offer? Hold on, what do I have more of? I can give him one water. Because if Ted's by himself, he can last. And also, um, these people will actually help me fight off bad guys because I actually gave them some stuff. So yeah, the next time some raiders come knocking at the door, those mutated people are going to whoop some ass. A sleazy looking trader carrying an equally scruffy bag on his shoulder paid us a visit. He offered us a simple one-time deal. For just one can of soup, we get the bag and all of its contents. I think that's the cat. So we might potentially be able to get a cat ending. So I'm just trying to throw anything at the wall and hopefully it sticks. But yeah. We got the cat. His name is Sheriko. Sheriko seems to be fond of our checkerboard. Its favorite game during stretches of extreme boredom and silence in the shelter is pushing the checker pieces off the table as it gazes intently at whoever happens to be sitting the closest. The sound of checkers hitting the floor every 10 seconds is getting on our nerves and we're considering taking the game away. Should we let Sheriko play with the checkers? Yes, because Ted looks like he's on borrowed time. And I don't think that Timmy's ever coming back. So, this might be a no bueno. This might be a bad run. Yup, Timmy died. Fuck. I don't know what to do. This is bad. Open in the name of freedom, came a shout from outside our door. We weren't sure who claimed to be representing freedom, but we could hear it was a group of people, probably armed. Anyone who introduces themselves like that is probably planning to kill someone in the name of freedom. Should we open? Like I said, everybody, Ted is on borrowed time. Hopefully, they give me something. Come on, give me something good. They gave me the axe! Oh my god! They actually gave me an axe and they gave me the bug spray. The bug spray could be turned into a med kit with the Boy Scout book. This could be a blessing in disguise. No freaking way. And somebody visited me, but I don't have any of the items that you want. The last thing we expected to hear while sitting in a fallout shelter was a trumpet. It was played by someone who was clearly not a trumpet player and who had probably never heard a trumpet player in his entire life. He came with a friend who knocked on the door and demanded that we let the merry men enter so they could take from the rich and give to the poor. Should we let them in? Do I look like a poor fellow? I do. I actually do. I don't think that I have that many things. So maybe you can give us something? Because we really don't have shit, dude. Please. Oh, wow. They took the Boy Scout book. You're a son of a bitch. You're a bitch of a son, aren't you? That is so messed up. So now I can't actually make the freaking thing, dude. While trying to pet the little devil, we found a piece of paper on its collar with an address scribbled on it. Could its previous owner still be around and worried sick? Chances are slim, but maybe we could pay them a visit or at least whatever's left of them. Yes, because I think that Ted's gonna die and I don't have any hope of making the medkit anymore. So that sucks. But it says, we grabbed our new fluffy friend for a little stroll through the waist, only to immediately run into a couple of gentlemen dressed in trench coats, fedoras, and shades. They gritted their teeth at the sight of the cat and said they'd been looking for it. Apparently, it belongs to their dear old Nan, who loves it dearly. Before we could utter a word, they took Sheriko, thanked us, and left. The cat didn't seem to mind, so maybe it's for the best? I hope so. Sure, times are hard, and there isn't much need to shave anymore, but beards are still not welcome in this house. Okay, so Ted is going to attempt to shave. Hopefully that means that Ted can actually have a clean-shaven beard. And I have an achievement. 
Hell yeah, baby. He's still sick. But at least he got a shave and I got an achievement. So that's cool, right? And the siblings are back and they want to borrow the axe. So I'm going to let them have it. But I need to get something. I, I need to get something that'll help Ted not be sick. Because this sucks. But the cat is back, though. And let's see. Sherikov came back at our shelter this morning. We're not exactly sure why or how it came back. Is it our good care it appreciates? Our kind hearts? Optimism? Or just our stockpile of soup cans? Only time will tell. Something should be done about Ted's sickness. Ted isn't thirsty anymore. Sorry, Ted. I wish I could help you. I really wish I could. When we look closely at our map, we notice someone had written a set of mysterious directions in one of the corners. Will it lead them to some kind of treasure? It might be worth sending someone to find out. I'm just doing anything at this point, everybody. There's no way I'm going to survive if I don't do these things. So let's see. I think I got another axe. No, I got two soup. Hell yeah, bro. Okay, so let's give Ted that. And a loud crash, a surprise shriek, and a bit of debris falling from our ceiling. Truly, a recipe for a good start to the day. As it turns out, Sherico found a new toy, a bit of innocuous wiring that it ripped out of the wall. Who knows what the cable's for, but our lights are still on, so it can't be that important, right? Should we take the wire away from our fluffy friend and investigate it? Yes. This could be an ending. I think it is. Day 41. It wasn't an ending? What was it? It wasn't shit! It really wasn't shit! We grabbed the cable and followed it to a rusty old truck parked in our neighbor's driveway. Upon opening the door, we were confronted with two men wearing huge headphones who looked extremely surprised to see us. They wiretapped our shelter when we were asleep and they were listening to everything we said. We gave them hell and marched back to our bunker. Ted keeps coughing and coughing. We'll just hold that cough a little longer, my boy. We got this. Just survive a little longer, Ted, for me. The agents who were spying on us are now at the door and want to explain themselves. Should we hear them out? Yes. Tell me things that I want to hear. Whisper sweet, nothing's into my ear. One time, just for me. They briefly waved some sort of ID cards in front of our faces and told us they're on a top secret government mission. The wiretap wasn't to spy on us, but rather on the cat. It's suspected of being a Soviet agent. They're willing to let us into their super top secret government safe house if we help them with some of their top secret missions. They assured us that they'd contact us again with more details. Ted keeps coughing and coughing. Like I said, just hold it in a little bit. We were never a huge fan of mushrooms, but with a colony of them growing on one of the walls, we've changed our loyalties. That should be one of the rules. Never eat anything growing on the side of your freaking walls. Using a high-tech setup involving paper cups and yards of string, the agents rang in with our top secret mission that will surely land us in the VIP bunker very soon. They want us to go on a successful expedition and write down what we saw in the journal. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? But I don't have anything that's gonna help me. You know what? I have to do it. But I think I'm gonna get locked out the bunker. Am I? Oh, no. Okay. Don't tell me I'm dead. Oh, shit. I got hurt. Ted left for the surface. We'll hope he'll be back soon. We graciously agreed to fulfill the request. They thanked us for doing our civic duty and promised to be back with more information soon. That recon mission was risky business. We had to visit neighborhoods that were dicey even in the best of times. The area was full of mutated cats and dogs fighting each other in gangs. All of them armed to the teeth. Hey, shout out the gang. We barely made it out there alive, but the agent seems to appreciate our efforts. Let's hope the missions are actually worth it. Our bucket is just about due for an upgrade, and we're expecting the government shelter to have an excellent bathroom. Maybe even a hot tub. But yeah, once again, shout out the gang, everybody, because we can't really do it without the gang. Our friends are back, and somehow it's not a surprise that they need our assistance yet again. The siblings were thrilled to announce that the camp has been built, and only one small issue remains. A huge nest of mutated cockroaches. Okay, so let's give the siblings the axe, and just try to make it as long as you can, Ted. Please, I need you to do this for me, Teddy baby. We gave the group just what they needed to get rid of the unwanted housemates. The insects are gone, and their nest was destroyed, so they will need to find another camp to settle in. Hopefully, they will choose a bandit camp instead of bothering decent wastelanders like our friends. During one of its insane episodes at around 3 last night, Sherikov ran face first into the wall, causing a loose brick to fall out. Behind it was a cigar box with some ammo inside. Okay, wait, what does that say? Ted's wounds are not a pretty sight. Either we get Ted medicine, or we never see him eat another can of soup curry. Fuck! Come on, man. You can't do this to me. I almost got an ending. Don't. Don't, 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 don't. Let me live. 
Let me live just like four more days and I swear we are gonna get out of here. When emptying our bucket in front of the shelter, we discovered a hastily drawn map on one of the ruined walls. Someone drew out a route and marked a spot at the end of it. Maybe there are supplies hidden there. Should we check it out? Ted, you're the only one who can. Sherikov doesn't really know shits. But it's day 54. Give me a medkit, give me a medkit, give me a medkit. BOOM! I don't think we even have water. But we got a radio. I mean, that's cool, right? That's something. The military is transmitting again. They said their first step is to locate any remaining survivors. I'm already on my way to get like two endings. So I'll be all right. But it's day 55. Come on, don't do this to me. Ted looks like he's on his last legs, bro. Oh, fuck. Don't. The more we know about what's going on outside, the better for us. Let's gather around the radio and see if we can tune into a station. Let's do it. Let's just huddle around it like a campfire and tell stories to each other. Day 56. Fuck. <laughs> Sheriff Cove. Tell me something I don't know, Sheriff Cove. A trader wants the bug spray for one water. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. Because I have nothing left. There's nothing left for you, boy. Come on. Day 57. Fuck. <laughs> Please. I'm so nervous. I'm so freaking nervous. Rescue me, please. Today during breakfast, we were startled when our map slid off the wall. We checked the nails holding it, but they were all firmly in place. It could be a poltergeist. Maybe we need to perform an exorcism to get rid of it. Anyway, in the wall behind the map, we discovered some sort of safe. We're curious as to what treasure might be inside. Shall we open it? Medkit. 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 I'm crossing my finger, crossing my butt cheeks. Give me a medkit. Just one time for me. If you love me, they don't love me. Nobody out there loves me. What was it? It was a can of soup. Your mom's a can of soup. Oh my goodness. What is this? Clearly, we're trustworthy after our last successful mission as the agents came back with another request. We are to generously provide either a couple soup cans or some water bottles. <laughs> are you freaking kidding me? I need to give you four? <laughs> I need to give them four! They want four in order for me to get rescued. And that's what happened. He died because he couldn't believe the audacity of asking for four cans of soup after almost 60 days of survival. That was nuts. That was Ted's nuts. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. I survived almost 60 days. 60 days on Sarbama after not playing this for a long time. And I know everybody, I couldn't get an ending. I was this close though. What, what is this? What, am, what hand signal am I making? I was this close. The hell is this? I was this close to actually getting an ending, I promise you all. The twins were gonna rescue me, okay? Like in like one or two more days, I promise. But yeah, everybody, that is gonna do it for revisiting 60 seconds in 2022. I do wanna play this again. I forgot how much fun I used to have playing this game. So if you want me to play this and run it back on Sarbama and try to get an ending, make sure you give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cove Scouts is that dude!